good morning class 8 hope you guys are doing fine great taking care of yourselves and having fun so it's time to meet time is coming closer hope so let's hope for the best pray to god and uh, respect everybody in life anybody who it is even if it's a animal respect it and uh, we'll get to know more about it and respect your parents also so without a do let's come to page 151 geography ssc i uh, will be at extensive farming i'll just read through and finish it today only dairy farming and plantation after that we are going to go to hit and major crops and agricultural and agricultural development or we can go back to history as it is here i have seen i don't know what chapters you are done or not unless i meet you so let's see and uh, what we can go through and take <clears throat> okay so extensive farming is mostly practiced in the sparsely populated areas which is suitable for farming where abundant land is available which is suitable for farming i have done this i'm just repeating it one or two commercial crops are generally grown the most important crops are grown of wheat and maize the total output is high but the yield per hectare is low in some regions the winter season is long this restricts a growing season in such areas only a single crop can be grown then we had this mixed of uh, cattle and crop together so i just gave a touch to it and so that we can go ahead and start plantation agriculture plantation agriculture is a type of commercial farming it is introduced by the european in the tropical subtropical regions farms called estates are very large this also i have told you dairy farming also i have told you i'm just giving a touch to it and uh, dairy farms as you know milk sugar milk ghee you get butter you get uh, paneer you get sweets dairy farm products everything to uh, do with dairy from products industrial cities it's a growth of development it has uh, its roots come from europe where the climate is suitable for nat natural pastures cattle are raised for milk near big cities to meet the needs of the people working in factories dairy farms need a large labor force to look after cattle at present machines are widely used for milking feeding and cleaning the cattle huge capital investments are thus needed gujarat rajasthan one of the biggest ones of amul whatever we use of amul whatever we get today thousands and thousands of people women walk long ways to go and deposit their milk and come back so all women power thanks to them so that is done you'll do that for homework major crops and agricultural developments which you have to do that we were on millets okay so sugarcane sugarcane is a kind of grass with a thick stem it grows to a height about 3 meters or more sugar is stored in the stem of the sugarcane new sugarcane plants grow from stem cuttings of the old plants sugar cranes probably originated in the eastern asia and was taken to the middle east and southern europe by the arab traders sugarcane plant needs hot and humid climate level land and well drained fertile soil no accumulation of water in the field the main sugarcane producing countries countries are brazil cuba and west indies india mexico pakistan australia Indonesia, Philippines, Hawaii Islands, Fiji, South Africa, and South Southern USA. Nowadays, sugarcane is grown in almost everywhere in the tropics and subtropics. However, there is hardly any sugarcane production in the temperate lands. Okay, in the tropical islands, that is there. We get that climate weather is there, but on the temperate lands, we don't get that. <coughs> cotton. Cotton has its origin in India. It was the first cultivated. during the period of the indus valley civilization cotton is the main raw material for cotton textiles industry it is also most widely used fiber to make cloth the cloth quality of raw cotton depends upon the length of the fiber its fineness luster softness strength color and clearness cotton is gradually grown as an annual crop cotton plants needs high temperature about 27 degree centigrade during the growing period rainfall about 60 to 100 cm and frequent showers 
fertile well drained soil capable of retaining moisture like the black cotton soil of the deccan plateau in india dry clear sunny weather during the time of ripening of the cotton balls the main cotton producing countries are usa china india pakistan brazil egypt sudan mexico and uzbekistan uzbekistan cotton is usually grown in small farms thus machines have limited use but in usa it is grown on large estates and machines are widely used cotton is india no one can beat indian cotton people still die for indian cotton that quality no one nowhere in the world you get that quality khadi that quality you never get jute is the second most important vegetable fiber after cotton it is also known as golden fiber jute is called the brown paper of wholesale trade as it is mostly used to make packing materials it is the cheapest fiber which can be dyed but not easily bleached you cannot color it you can dye it sorry you can dye that color you can put a dye on it but you cannot bleach it you cannot clear change that jute grows well in a warm and wet climate alluvial soil rich in salts is suitable however deltaic soil which is renewed everywhere by floods is ideal for this cultivation bangladesh and bengal jute is an awesome we have we call it pot jute is usually sown in march or april it is its stems are cut in august or september jute growing and harvesting require abundant labor this is readily available in the densely populated tropical areas where it is grown the main jute producing countries are india bangladesh as i said brazil taiwan china thailand and malaysia india and bangladesh are the leading jute producers in the world only jute only jute you will see part 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 of it is hanging everywhere tea is prepared from leaves of a tropical shrub which is native to hill slopes of monsoon asia its cultivation probably originated in the chang chiang valley of china tea is popular drink in the most of british commonwealth countries tea is a beverage crop grown on plantations tea plant needs sloping land to avoid water logging temperature about 25 degree centigrade is most suitable annual rainfall above 250 cm well distributed throughout the year deep well drained fertile soil water cannot log in you cannot have water cheap labor for picking the leaves tea picking is a skillful job which requires patience and judgment it is usually done by women two tender leaves and a bud are usually plucked from the stem the picking season is from march to december in india the tea leaves are plucked once in a fortnight while in china tea leaves are plucked three or four times in a year once in a four time every four weeks they are plucked but in china they are plucked after three or four times in a year the main tree producing countries are china india sri lanka kenya japan indonesia and bangladesh nowadays modern machines are used to process tea leaves proper rolling fermenting and blending of tea leaves give it the required flavor we have so many types of teas these days isn't it but my best is coffee coffee drinking coffee and that relaxation which i get i guess i don't know it's my uh, lsd for me it's my life saving drug the coffee plant is a native of the highlands of southern ethiopia africa best coffee the name coffee has been derived from the highland district of kaffa where it was first found coffee is now a popular drink coffee powder is obtained by grinding the roasted beans or berries it is widely cultivated on the lower hill slopes of the tropic regions coffee plants needs average temperature of 22 degree centigrade annual rainfall between 150 to 250 cm well drained loamy soil with humus content derived from igneous rocks humus the qualities of that humus rocks has to be there in that uh, water in that uh, soil shelter from direct sunlight therefore shady trees are planted in the plantations to give shade to the coffee plants brazil is the largest producer and exporter of coffee in the world other coffee producing countries are colombia india angola ethiopia mexico cote de libor and east africa usa is the larger important largest importer of coffee in the world it imports all the coffee from wherever it gets it takes in coffee people drink a lot of coffee in america agricultural different there are different type of coffees preparation if you go to barista if you go to cafe coffee there are different flavors different uh, type of coffees you get and you can drink it in different ways most of the countries in the world are making sincere efforts 
to increase crop production to meet the needs of increasing population. This can be achieved through increasing land under cultivation, growing more than one crop in a year, improving irrigation facilities, using high yielding variety seeds, using organic and chemical fertilizers. We will study about agricultural farms in India and USA to understand the development of agriculture in a developing and a developed country. In a country which is developing and already in a developed country, how they go out. A farm in India. 75% of our population live in villages and depend directly or indirectly on agriculture. It provides food for human beings and raw materials for agro-based industries. We have selected a farm in the Ganga plains where the land is level and the fertile. The main features of agriculture here are subsistence agriculture is mostly practiced. The farmer's family consumes almost the entire produce with the little or no surplus to sell in the market. Land holdings are small due to the inheritance law. The land which belongs to the father is divided among his sons and daughters. This leads to small and uneconomic land holdings. Agriculture depends largely on the monsoon rain which is uncertain, unreliable and unregular. Which is irregular. Most of the farm work such as ploughing, irrigation, harvesting and threshing are done by animals and members of the farmer's family. The production of food crop is top priority. The area under fodder crop is almost insignificant, that is for animals. The farmers face many problems. Some of them, he cannot buy enough agricultural inputs due to fund or shortage. He has to borrow money from a money lender or a bank. He has to sell his produce immediately after harvest due to shortage of proper storage facilities. He has to depend upon various cooperative societies to meet his needs. However, the Green Revolution has changed agriculture in the following ways. Introduced high yielded uh, seeds, uh, high yielding variety seeds, ensured enough and timely availability of water through irrigation, adequate use of chemical fertilizers, use of pesticides and insecticides, consolidating and la of land, land holdings, farm mechanization, provision of agricultural credit on soft terms from the banks to do agriculture. Agriculture universities were set up to train the farmers. This helped not only to enhance production but also to improve the general social and economic conditions of farmers and their families to come to know how long will they stay. This is the part in India which is still under development. A farm in USA. USA is a prosperous country. It is blessed with vast fertile plains and extensive grasslands. The prairies in the USA stretch from the rocky mountains to the in the west to the great lakes in the east. The prairies are located in the interior of the continent and thus experience continental type of climate. Everything is there. We have selected a farm in the midwest region of the prairie grassland for our study. The natural environment here favors the cultivation. I will come back in the next video.